I am the good shepherd who lays down his life for his sheep. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowd, No one who lights a lamp conceals it with the vessel or sets it under a bed. Rather, he places it on the lampstand so that those who enter may see the light, for there is nothing hidden that will not become visible, and nothing secret that will not be known and come to light. Take care then how you hear. To anyone who has more will be given, and from the one who has not, even what he seems to have will be taken away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Today we celebrate the, memor the memory and also the feast of Padre Pio, this Italian saint. And it's very interesting and it's also linked to the Gospel because in the Gospel we have heard that it says, For there is nothing hidden that will not become visible, and nothing secret that will not be known and come to light. Why do I say this? Because Padre Pio had this gift. He was gift with this, that when people came before him for a confession, people would confess only the sins that they wanted to confess. But Padre Pio knew the inside of the heart, and he knew that there were still some sins that were not confessed. And he will say, you haven't confessed this. You haven't confessed that. And these people felt ashamed before Padre Spio gave. And also, this makes us reflect to what we just heard on the Gospel. The nothing hidden will not be visible and come to light. The grace of priesthood and the testimony of Padre Pio, an anniversary of faith. Every day, dear brothers and sisters, that we celebrate the Eucharist is an important day. But today, for me, it's particularly significant for two reasons. The first is that we celebrate the memory of Saint Padre Pio of Pietrocina, an Italian saint who, although we did not him personally, we can consider a saint of our time, just as we do with Saint John Paul II, or more recently, Blessed Carlo Acutis, whose canonization has already been approved, though the date has not yet been set. The second reason for my joy is that today I celebrate my first anniversary of priestly ordination. First of all, I want to express my deep gratitude to God for the gift of the priesthood and unmerited gift. I am grateful that, despite knowing the inmost part of my heart, my struggles, my limitation, and my weakness, God has called me to serve His people, to serve Him, to be an instrument of His grace and a preacher of His gospel. The priesthood is, without a doubt, an undeserved gift, and I feel deeply thankful not only to God, but also to the people who have accompanied me on this journey, and of course, our Blessed Mother, especially my family and friends who have prayed for me and continue to do so. I know that in this great mission, I am not alone, because Christ, who has chosen me, is with me, and He is guiding me. As a motto for my priestly life, I have taken the words of St. Paul, I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Galatians 2.20 Even though challenges and difficulties may arise, I strive every day to be faithful to Christ, to not turn my back on Him or betray Him, but to offer Him my life with a total dedication. This is a moment of deep gratitude to God for His infinite love, 
for calling me to serve him as a priest, being an instrument of his grace, and a missionary of his love, and an ambassador of his mercy. Furthermore, dear brothers and sisters, as I mentioned before, today is also the feast of Padre Pio, to whom I have a special devotion, also along with St. Augustine. Padre Pio left us an extraordinary spiritual legacy. Despite the persecutions he suffered, even from people within the church, he remained faithful to Christ. He bore the wounds of Christ on his body for more than 50 years, seeing them as a way to share in the redemptive suffering of the Lord. He also spent long hours in the confessional, offering God's forgiveness to countless souls. It is said that he had the gift of reading conscience, and when people did not confess all their sins, he will recall them with precision, leading them to a deeper and more sincere confession. Padre Pio was fully configured with Christ, offering his suffering both physical and spiritual, and resisting the constant attacks of the enemy who tried to pull him away from his mission. Dear brothers and sisters, let us follow the example of all these saints, but especially today that we celebrate the memorial, the feast of Padre Pio. He that was faithful, let us ask God to grant us the grace to remain always faithful to Him. And I ask you to continue praying for me and for all the priests in the world, so that I and they may be faithful and persevere in priestly vocation, always being a collaborators of the grace until the end. What a joy, what a great joy to say this and also to tell you that we must pray for vocations, that we must pray for priestly vocations, because it's not that God stopped calling people to the religious life or to the priesthood, but it's the people that we have closing our ears. And we are surrounded by many noise that we are not allowed to listen to the calling that God is doing. So let us ask God to soften our hearts and to open our ears so that we may hear His calling, whether it will be for a vocation, as a priest, a religious, a religious sister, or and also to marriage. Amen.